muscles could then slam shut, sealing the fate of the Mosasaur's prey. But that's not all. Inside the mouth and in the back of the head region were these series of teeth on the separate pterygoid bone. So it not only had this set of outside teeth, but positioned inside the skull was an additional set of teeth. It was sort of the alien of its time. Powered by its long, flexible tail, it propelled itself through the water like an eel, steering with its four paddle-like flippers. What did a mosasaur eat? Anything it wanted. It fed on plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs, sharks, and on anything else unfortunate enough to cross its path. Their flippers and tails often bear the scars of attacks from their own kind. Mosasaurs evolved a variety of sizes and shapes, from the agile 16-foot platycarpus to the intimidating Mosasaurus maximus that stretched 40 feet. The deep offered no protection for prey. The Mosasaur could dive 100 feet down and more. So well adapted and highly efficient were the Mosasaurs that their strange disappearance near the end of the Cretaceous has puzzled scientists. What could kill so splendid a killing machine? Some suggest a change in climate may have disrupted the food chain, but Bob Baca disagrees. The most fascinating thing about these sea monsters, the most puzzling thing, is they're linked to the land predators. These are the top predators in the ocean, plesiosaurs. Top predators on land at the same time are dinosaurs, things like T. rex and, and its ancestors. They didn't see each other. They're living thousands of miles from each other. They're not the same habitat, but they're linked like this in evolutionary history. When evolution hit T-Rex, it and all of its relatives went extinct. Evolution was hitting the plesiosaurs, and they were all going extinct. And the whole history of dinosaurs, there are six extinctions, major ones. Every time the land is hit, the ocean is hit. Top predators on land, top predators in the ocean. It's very hard to think of a single environmental event which will wipe out a top predator in the open ocean and a top predator living at three or four or five thousand feet somewhere in a mountainous terrain. But it happened again and again and again. Climate won't do it. Change in rainfall, change in heat, change in summer drought, that won't do it either. Some people say meteorite strikes will do it. There's no evidence of meteorite strikes through most of the age of reptiles. So it has to be something else. Oddly, it may be the smallest of sea creatures that did these monsters in. Around 75 million years ago, a mysterious catastrophe shattered the delicate ecosystem. As the continents drifted, the ocean currents changed. The plankton population crashed. As they began disappearing, so did the fish and squid that fed on them. The mosasaurs and the plesiosaurs that depended on this bounty also began to disappear. The large seagoing reptiles were starved into extinction. Their ignoble demise left room for smaller creatures to reclaim the oceans. But the oceans were not necessarily a safer place. The hunting grounds were ripe for a new killer, bigger and deadlier than any that went before it. shark held hostage a New England resort town. Measuring 20 feet, the shark was large enough to terrorize millions of moviegoers. But some 25 million years ago, a relative of the great white prowled the waters. Although the extinct shark, Megalodon, dwarfed the great white, a clear family resemblance is undeniable. While remains of these monsters have been found the world over, Dr. Michael Gottfried of the Calvert Marine Museum has been hunting shark fossils on the shores of the Chesapeake Bay. 
The megalodon, or the megatooth shark, as we sometimes like to call it, grew to over probably about 50 feet in length. Uh, we estimate from the size of the teeth on the megalodon, comparing them to the size of the living type of great white shark, that it reached at least 52 feet in length and probably something over 50 tons. Uh, in, in human terms, that's about the size and about as big around as a greyhound bus and about the weight of about seven or eight Tyrannosaurus rex dinosaurs. They're the sort of the epitome of predatory shark evolution, uh, the biggest, baddest sharks that ever lived. His model of this giant is one-eighth the size of the actual shark. A single tooth from the mouth of this giant shark measures six inches long and five inches at the base. Well, megalodon teeth are incredibly sharp. And not only do they have a very sort of razor-sharp edge right along the, the tooth, but they're serrated like a steak knife. So not only could they slice just because of the sharpness of the edge, but they could saw back and forth with this serrated edge to cut through meat and, and even bone. And they found the tips of these bits of these teeth broken off in whale bones. So we know that they were capable of biting right through the skin, right through all the muscle, right into the bone. The jaw of the megalodon spanned almost six feet more than enough to swallow a dolphin or a man in one gulp. Why these monsters got so big has remained an intriguing mystery. One answer may be that they fed on large creatures such as whales and dolphins. Unfortunately, other questions may never be answered. Sharks are largely cartilage, which doesn't fossilize. Teeth and vertebrae such as this make up the few remains of megalodon. It is doubtful that much more will ever be found. The limited fossil record does not reveal what happened to these giant sharks. They may have become too large and outmaneuvered by smaller, more agile sharks, or the larger animals they preyed upon could have retreated to colder waters out of the megalodon's reach. Whatever the cause, most paleontologists believe they finally died out some two million years ago. Gone forever are the monsters of the Mesozoic, which fuel our nightmares and fire our imaginations. The dolphin-like ichthyosaur, the long-necked plesiosaur, and the horrific mosasaur have turned to dust. Their fragile fossils, coaxed from the ground, bear witness to their once awesome dominion under the sea. Gone too are the huge and menacing sharks that followed, the streamlined terrors whose descendants rule the seas today. The rocks hold clues to the Earth's subtle, relentless changes over eons, and to nature's constant refinement of the creatures that inhabit the Earth.